Hi everyone, this is Mary with Mama Bear Prepper. You guys, I am about to have myself a Mahler bagging fiesta, okay? <laughs> I have a ton of beans and a little bit of rice I need to put in Mahler bags today. You know, I've just been slowly collecting all this. I can just do it all at once and get it taken care of because currently I am working on reorganizing my Prepper sorts pantry, which is a huge, huge, job y'all it's been taking me a little over a week now just in my spare time i go in there reorganizing things putting making sure everything has labels doing all that kind of stuff um i have those big totes you know i'm leaving all of those i have you know like one or two strictly for beans you know one or two for rice so on and so on so i have these i need to go ahead and get in my bags today see how well they uh they go down and get airtight then i can put them away and forget about them for like 20 to 30 years okay and have that for emergency food okay um so i am going to i have all my supplies here i have my flat hair iron i have my mylar bags i'm using two different sizes of mylar bags right here this one is the one quart gusseted mylar bag okay this one right here is the seven and a half mil Mahler bags, but these are the eight by 12 ones. Uh, these, it doesn't say the dimensions for this one, but all of my stuff, I mostly try to get from Pack Fresh USA. You know, this is the brand I favor the most. Those oxygen absorbers back there in my mason jar, <laughs> those are from a different brand I've been having. I just pull them out because I want to use them, get rid of them because whatever brand I bought them from, they came in and on the little package, they did not say the amount of cc's they were. So I'm guessing, you know, I'm just gonna guess the least amount, which is maybe like 200 cc's for that size. So I wanna use those. I'm going to use a lot more than what I think I should because I want to have overkill in each bag. And I just wanna get rid of them. <laughs> okay, because I will never order from whatever brand that is. Again, you, you probably just heard my jar pop because I did open it just to check the freshness of those um, oxygen absorbers and it just popped. So that's what you heard, that little ding is from that mason jar right there. It just sucked out all of the air. All right, you guys, I'm going to try to get through this as quickly as I can. For any of you out there who is completely new to this, in every video I try to go over the pamphlets. You know, if you order from Pack Fresh USA, they do send out these really good pamphlets full of great information. So I'm gonna quickly go over one or maybe both of these. Um, like I have in each other video I've done. Um, but y'all, I will have the Pack Fresh USA brand linked in my description down below. Just click on that little um, upside down arrow and it tells you all the information. You know, they are Amazon affiliate links. So whatever you may purchase through those links, I will earn a small commission at no extra charge to you guys. Just to let you guys know, okay? And if you'd like to support this channel, you can go ahead and click on those links and you don't even have to order that one product. You can just do your normal everyday shopping and I will get a small commission at no extra charge to you guys if you guys want to support this channel in any way, shape or form. I truly appreciate it. And I truly appreciate the ones that do that already. I mean, you guys, that is so nice. Thank you so much. All right, so I'm gonna quickly go over these pamphlets. Pack Fresh USA, my favorite brand for mala bags and oxygen absorbers. So good, never had a problem with them, okay? I'm gonna quickly just hold this up. So if you want to pause the video to read it and get information, go right ahead, okay? All right, you guys, the absorption required for common foods. This little chart is so handy dandy. You might want to pause the video and take a screenshot, okay, if you're on your phone. This is what you need to go by, okay? Um, I'm gonna quickly go over this. You can pause it read it if you would like it gives you lots of good information okay i'm gonna quickly go over this it'll just take too long for me to read everything um it's the back of it hope you guys can read this pretty good i'm trying to put it on an angle without any glare um pack fresh usa this one might be a little different um, same information though, um, go ahead and pause it at any time and take a screenshot and read it. Here's another chart, okay? 
go ahead and pause it, take a screenshot if you would like. This, you need to know this, okay? Because each different container size, each different model bag size, and depending on what um, you pack, depending on how much air would be in that, depends on what oxygen absorber requirements you need, okay? Also, this highlighted, remember, do not expect all the bags to have a vacuum packed look. Oxygen is only 21% of air and four fifths of the air will remain. Yes, you usually will notice the volume decrease, but products with high interstitial air volume will often not get this look, even though the process has indeed worked. Okay, now I get so many questions about, you know, people worrying because it does not have that vacuum packed look. Look, if you know you did everything right, if your oxygen absorbers felt good and they were still fresh, you know, they were nice, soft, and like powder in the inside, and you used enough of them, and you heat sealed your bag on time, you know, you didn't let it just sit out forever, then I would not worry about it, okay? Use your own judgment there. But I'm just, you know, this right here, pay attention to this, just so you don't freak out. Because what I've noticed is, well, today I'm doing the red beans and the rice. That usually has no problem with me getting those vacuum packed looks on those smaller bags. But if I do noodles, say like the long um, spaghetti noodles, I have like these right here because I have a lot of these I have to do next. Those, I usually do not notice a vacuum packed look on those. So if you want to pause it, go ahead and read through this. Um, here's some tips on the back. Um, go ahead and read all of that. You know, if you're really interested. But y'all, like I said, Pack Fresh USA. So far, so good. My favorite brand for Mylar bags and oxygen absorbers. Super, super good. Had no problems with them at all. And the um, I like to use a five to seven and a half mil. They're like the thicker bags, y'all. They're not that flimsy, flimsy, <laughs> um, cheap looking thin Mylar bags. I just personally, I would not waste my time on those. And I would just, Personally, I just don't trust them. I've seen videos with people showing how they look after a couple of years and they do not look good. I mean, they say it's still safe to eat what's inside, but if you research those videos and you see what I'm talking about, I just, you would say the same thing, okay? <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna jump in this. Um, like I said, you know, I went over this with you guys. If you have any questions, go through what I just showed you, pause the video, read it, take a screenshot, all right, you guys, so I'm going to quickly work through this as quick as I can because I have a lot to do here, as you can see. So you can just watch how I do it um, because after this one, I have a lot of stuff to do. I have the spaghetti pasta, different shapes and sizes to do of that. I have flour, salt, sugar. Um, I think that's it, but I have a lot of that to do, okay? All right, you guys. For me, this is how I personally like to label my Mylar bags. I put the weight, so I like the small one, it's a one pound bag. This will fit perfectly in this size, this one quart. I label it red beans. I like to put the packed on date, best buy date on the, the red bean bag. And every so often, you know, I will add on a bag, you know, the serving size and the amount of protein, fiber, and carbs that's in that, okay? So for the red beans, you know, 11 grams of protein, 8 grams of fiber, 31 grams of carbs of one fourth cup of dry beans. You don't have to do that on every bag, but I like to on some bags, not all, but some, you know, because it's all in there and you can still get the information, you know, if you search through for a bag with the information on it. All right, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to stop talking. I'm just going to work. Okay, so here we go. These, these smaller bags, not all of them, but some of them like this, the gazetted ones and the ones with the Ziploc, you know, they do stand up for easy filling, okay?
right y'all like I said they didn't label the CC amount on this bag from whatever company I bought this from so I'm guessing the least amount for this size is maybe like 200 of course I'm gonna do overkill and like my little chart here says let's see okay we're doing beans okay we're doing one quart so the minimum amount is 100 cc's okay I'm gonna do a lot more because I want to get rid of these oxygen absorbers and use some that I know the exact amount of cc's they are make sure you check and make sure they feel fresh you know nice and soft You know, these are easy to do because they are the Ziploc kind. So I Ziploc it halfway and then, and then I push out as much air as I can, okay? All right, so that way I can have it sit there until I'm ready to iron it with my flat hair iron. Y'all, look how dark these beans are compared to these. I wonder why. All right, I went ahead and set my flat hair iron. Yes, it's a flat hair iron to 392 degrees. This is the setting that works for these types of Mahler bags. For me, um, it works perfect. what I like to do as soon as I flat iron it is you now you can have it kind of bulky like this but I try to like to distribute the weight of the beans in the pack just to try to get it as flat as I can because you want to do this before it's the oxygen absorbers start working you know shape it into the shape that you want for me when I put mine into the big totes I like to lay them flat and just stack them up on each other so that's why I like to try to get mine as flat as I can now before the oxygen absorbers suck out all that air and you just can't do it then. When it's done cooling off, it should look like this. You know, it's just the heat, it melts these smaller bag sides together and you have a nice, good, tight seal. These do have these little notches right here, these little notches. So when you are ready to open this, you can just tear it apart. That's why I try to heat seal it right above that area, you know, so it's just easy to open. This one's starting to um, cool off. Now these, you know, these are the ones with the Ziploc, okay? So they have been sealed. 
Um, I can take my time with these, okay? So with these, you wanna make sure um, seal above this because when you tear it open with this little notch right here, this, you don't want to have it heat sealed because you wanna be able to close it back up, you know, to keep your stuff fresh. Try to keep the bugs out of it and all while you, you are using whatever kind of food item you have in here. So as you can see, I'm just right above that Ziploc bag, the Ziploc line. Okay, I'm right-handed, so I'm just gonna turn it around and finish it up, okay? Nice and heat sealed here. Like I said, you know, before it starts sucking out that oxygen, go ahead and fix your bags however you want to store them. I like to put stack mine up on top of each other like this. So I want to try to have them flat, not all sitting here at the bottom. I want to have them as flat as I can. It's my own personal method that I like to do, okay? That I've just, I've learned that I liked over time of doing this. All right, y'all, I have a lot more I need to put in my bags and I wanna try to hurry up and get done. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get through that. I'm starting to run out of memory space also, so I will just come back when I am done. Be right back, you guys. All right, so I just got done Mylar bagging all of these beans and rice. Y'all, I just got done. Some of them, like the one of the first ones I've done is already starting to get that vacuum sucked out air look vacuum sucked out air look they're starting to get that vacuum packed look um and the other ones are slowly starting to do that so once they do that you know i think it can take up to 24 to 48 hours from what i read on those booklets so if i can remember right before i put all this up i'll come back on here and show you how everything looks okay um with the rice i just put each five pound bag into a bigger mylar bag than what I had out on the table when I showed you like in the beginning. Um, so I had five pound bags in each one of these mylar bags right here. Um, yeah, y'all, this is a lot of work and it took a lot of time. So I'm just gonna leave it all here. Maybe by tomorrow I will come back on here and show you what it looks like before I put it up. Okay, you guys, thanks for watching and I'll check back soon. Hey everyone, so I'm back. It is now the next day. It has been a little over 24 hours, and this is how my bags look. Most of them do have that vacuum-packed look, so I'm really pleased with that. All of them except for, let's see, these three right here, like the very first ones I've done, does not have that vacuum-packed look, okay? These are the red beans, and I have three, four of them the same size, okay? This one has a vacuum-packed look, as you can see. You can easily see the beans poking out of there and these do not um so y'all i use pretty much the same oxygen absorbers for all of these they all felt nice fresh and soft you know not hard and crunchy and expired so and like i said in the uh the pamphlet i'll show you again right here highlight it it says do not expect all the bags to have a vacuum packed look Oxygen is only 21% of air, and four-fifths of the air will remain. So, y'all, I think I'm just going to leave these like this and not worry about it, because I know my oxygen absorbers were good, okay? Um, also, also, it was in the very beginning that I've done these, and I just don't think I, you know, got into the habit of trying to squeeze out enough air like I did with all of these. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to worry about it, but if you do this and you're worried about yours and you might want to throw in some more oxygen absorbers or switch out the oxygen absorbers or whatever, always remember you can just cut it, change out the oxygen absorbers or add more and then just reseal it. Okay. But I'm not going to bother because I know, I think mine, I don't have to worry about mine, but, um, and these, these do have a Ziploc thing. So if I do cut it, I'm just going to be missing that ziploc and for the ones that don't have the ziploc uh where is it? i know i have some somewhere so i can show you guys i think it's these right here like these that don't have the ziploc bag you know you can cut it straight across 
you know, do what you gotta do and then reseal it. Or you could just snip off a corner, like just a big enough corner, you know, and just, it doesn't have to be like a perfect edge. Just cut it off, slip in some more oxygen absorbers, and then just seal that corner and squeeze out all the air that you can possibly squeeze out. So, you know, it's just up to you. Use your own judgment. You're the one that's packing it away. You're there, you're seeing, you're feeling, you're touching the oxygen absorbers. So use your own judgment when you do this yourself, okay? But y'all, <laughs> this took me a long time yesterday. So I'm so glad I got this over with. All right, so now I'm ready to go ahead and put these away into my totes. You know, on each tote, I have a piece of paper where I track the weight. So that's why, um, you know, I write down the pounds. You know, it was a one pound bag or I put two one pound bags in one, you know, and I label it. So I know how many pounds I have and I can keep track of it. I write it down, you know, keep journaling it. Every time you add something in there, like my tote for rice, I know exactly how many pounds of rice I have. And I try to, you know, give the best estimate of how many cups also, you know, like these. You didn't see me do the rice, but I did pour out a five pound bag and I scooped it up. So I know how many cups are into that five pound bag, which is 13 cups. Okay. Roughly about 13 cups. If I measured it right, you know, it gives you a good estimate just so you know how many pounds and also how many cups you have also of each item. I mainly do that with my rice, the beans. I really don't keep track of the cups of how many cups it is, just the weight. Um, so that's what I like to do. Like, I have a certain tote just for rice. I have a certain tote just for red beans because we do favor red beans. That's our favorite bean around here is red kidney beans. The variety of beans that's non-red beans, I put into one tote um, and I just, you know, I make a line for like navy beans, um, pinto beans, and I write the weight for each one so I know what's in that tote. You know, I just like to be extremely organized or as organized as I can try to be. Um, that it'll, get, it'll go a long way in keeping track of what you bring in for your proper pantry, okay? So, I am done with this video. I need to edit this video and get it up for you guys. Also, not today because I am cooking and, you know, I just don't want to do any more mala bags while I'm cooking because, you know, the heat and the moisture in the air, you don't want that getting into your mala bags when you do that. So, you know, I'm taking the day. I did this yesterday, so today I'm taking the day. I'm cooking. I'm baking. I want a nice, good, hot meal for tonight. <laughs> um, baking some chicken, potato salad, corn on the cob, maybe some baked beans, and then a pumpkin cake for dessert. So, <laughs> going all out for dinner tonight, okay? Um, so, with that heat and moisture in the air, I don't want to fool with this, okay? But, I will be having another video with me doing flour pasta noodles oh uh, what do i have right here salt and sugar so that will be another video coming very soon probably after this one sometime okay all right i'm so glad you joined me for this video i hope you guys are doing this stocking food away for emergencies you know this will last like 20 to 30 plus years okay <laughs> as long as no rats or if these don't puncture and no bugs can get into them, they will last you a long time, okay? A tip, if you live in an area with lots of mice, you know, I live in the South. Um, I have never seen a mouse or a rat before in my entire life. So that's not something I really have to worry about because if they do exist, we have so many snakes, the snakes eat them before we can probably even see them. <laughs> so that's probably why I've never seen them, okay? But my point is, like these, I am putting into totes, you know, mice can chew through all that, okay? So, I would recommend putting those glue traps around your proper pantry storage. So, if something is sneaking and crawling and creeping around there, they'll get stuck to that glue trap, okay? Um, I have a lot of those glue traps because I cannot stand bugs. Those things are good for all, all bugs, okay? <laughs> um, all bugs. And... You know, I'm worried if a snake will get into where I have all this stored and I just come across a snake one day. So I'm hoping those things will catch a snake too <laughs> uh, for me because I do not want to come across no snakes and spiders. I cannot stand those too, okay? But that's something to think about. I just want to throw that in there. Get you some glue traps. You no, know, it's not poison. They're non-toxic. They're very safe if you have kids around. You know, you're not spraying chemicals. And you're not spraying chemicals all around your food. They're glue traps. Just really sticky glue plain and simple. I cannot 
recommend those highly enough. They are great to have and just set them all around everywhere. It's like on your shelf and between the totes, on the floor, in the corners of the room, everywhere. They're great to have. So if there is a mouse sneaking around, you know, hopefully that glue trap will get that mice, mouse, you know, before he damages and eats through your totes and your Milo bags <laughs> to get to all this food. All right, you guys. Thanks for watching. I'm making this way too long. So please give this video a thumbs up if you like this. And don't forget to check down in the description. I do have Amazon links for, you know, the, um, the bags that I like to use and the oxygen absorbers that I prefer. I do in our small commission, but at no extra charge for you guys. And if you guys don't even want to order what you click on the link for, you know, just do your other normal everyday shopping, no pressure, but I do get a small commission that does help out this channel if you would like to support this channel in that way, shape, and form. Please feel free to do so. <laughs> All right, thanks you guys. Take care and keep on prepping.